Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the Kurt 4 pole trailer wiring harness on a 2022 Chrysler Pacifica. Now four pole wiring is going to be essential if you plan on towing a trailer and a lot of accessories these days will have lights on them that you're going to get those lighting functions from your four pole. And this just simply goes back into a module where those wires tie off and plug in directly to your taillights. So that way there's really no cutting or splicing that's required when plugging in. Now you are going to have to run a power wire up to the front to get that 12 volt power supply, but really that's not too terribly bad. It comes with all the butt connectors to be able to to do that and it's minimal. Now this is going to give you not only your running lights, your turn signals, but also your brake lights. It's going to let the people behind you know what you intend to do, keeping you safe and legal. Now this wiring harness is going to allow you to have lighting functions go to your trailers or even some of the accessories today will have lights on them and this will just simply tie into your taillights it just as a jumper wire and that way it, you don't have to actually cut and splice into your taillight wiring it's just going to plug and play with OEM style clips. Now there is going to be a little bit of cutting and splicing just with a power wire that's going to run up to our battery and that's going to give us our 12 volt power supply but having our four pole will keep you safe safe and legal by not only giving you your running lights, turn signals, but also your brake lights. So it's going to keep you safe while you're towing that trailer. Now this is module protected, meaning all of your wiring, if you do have back feed from your trailer, is going to be protected from ever damaging any of the wiring from your factory harnesses. And it's also got a fuse up front near the battery. So if you have any surge from the battery, no problem. It's going to be protected. Now overall, this is a little bit trickier than most plug and play trailer wiring that I've done. And mostly that just comes down to the fact that it's pretty tight to have to get those wires pulled through. And you really don't want to pull this whole fascia off. Um, so I found a little bit of trick to kind of help you along. So if you are getting your trailer wiring installed, I'm going to walk you through all those steps so we can get yours installed. To begin our installation, we're going to need to remove our taillights, and that's where our plug is going to be that we're going to tie our wiring harness into. So we'll open up our tailgate here. And each taillight is going to have two screws here. These are going to be a T27 Torx bit. So we'll go ahead with an extension and get these removed. Now I do suggest during all of this to have a nice safe spot to keep your hardware and it's going to make reinstallation a lot easier. So now we should be able to just kind of wiggle this out. Now there's going to be some alignment tabs that just generally have rubber around them. So they kind of puts up a little bit of a fight, but just kind of giving it pressure towards the back and kind of wiggling back and forth should loosen that up and we should be able to get this to pop out. So that's going to bring us to our plug on the taillight here. And this is where our harness is going to tie into. So we're going to go ahead, pull back this red clip, which is just a locking tab. So just push back on that and then we'll be able to push this tab in and separate that. I'm going to go ahead and do the same on the other side of the van. We're going to be fish wiring our wires up to the plugs, but we're also going to have to mount up our module and run our power wire up. So it's going to be beneficial to pull our underbody panel off and it's just going to be a series of eight millimeter screws. There's going to be some here on the driver's side wheel well that you're going to want to remove as well. So you'll see one up here, one here, one here as well, and then just kind of work your way over. And once you get all your eight millimeters off, there's also going to be some 10 millimeter plastic nuts that we'll be pulling off. So we'll get to those as well as some other plugs. So there's a decent amount under here, but we'll start with our eight millimeters to get those removed. Along here, the eight millimeters, you're going to find out that not all of these have to be taken out. So just kind of work your way here and you'll see which ones are actually attached to the underbody panel. Now there's also going to be these 10 millimeters here that has this center section attaching to the rear section. So we'll go ahead and get these removed. So now there's going to be these plastic clips here. And if you have a large Phillips or even a flathead, you're just going to want to rotate these out. And it does help to put a little bit of downward pressure by pulling on this just because it's plastic thread. Sometimes it can kind of re-thread as you put pressure on it. So just pull this down and you should feel it kind of release like that. And it's going to stay in this underbody panel. 
We'll go ahead and get this one off as well. And with those out, we should be able to take our underbody panel and set this aside. Now, to feed our fish wire down, I just went and took an airline tube. And if you don't have an airline tube, you can go ahead and use a string with a nut attached to it, just so it has weight and kind of get that to go all the way down. And this is gonna allow us to pull that wire up. Um, now it is pretty tight here. So you can see where our taillight wire is. It's got this little plastic plug. I'm gonna just pry this off so we can kind of get it out of the way, just to give us a little bit more space to bring that wire up. So just kind of work this back and forth and it should separate here. And that way we can kind of just draw this out. Now, once we have our fish wire pulled down, we have it on the bottom side here, we're gonna go ahead, grab our harness, and we're gonna be taping this to the end of it. And this is gonna allow us to pull that up and get it in place. So on the left side, we're gonna be using the yellow and brown wires. And I suggest when taping this, try to make this as thin as possible. So you don't wanna double up your plugs, just kind of spread this out. And that way it can kind of go up a little bit easier as it is pretty tight. Now I was able to get this to pull through. It is very, very tight. What I might suggest here, obviously in hindsight, but I, uh, I peeled this back. There's a T27 screw and as well as a plastic pin here that I just pried up and out. And that just kind of gave me a little bit more room to work here, but I'm kind of thinking the best option is to feed your fish wire down through here, take that wire and just run it over to where you can get your plug over. And that way you're not having to fight through that tight area. You can go ahead and take our taillight plug and it's just gonna go into this end here. So just snap that in lock this in place. Then we can go ahead and put all of our little plastic panels that we took off kind of back in place here, as well as the hardware that we took out to pull this. And this plug is just gonna go directly into our taillight. Now with our connectors in place, it's a rather tight fit. There's just not a whole lot of area here. So it does look like this portion's open. So what I'm gonna do is kind of just take some of our plugs and wires and feed that up. And that's gonna allow us to um, kind of get this all popped back in place here. But yeah, Chrysler didn't do us any favors uh, as far as making this easy to run these wires. So throughout this process, you're just gonna need to be patient here. So again, yeah, you're just gonna need to feed those plugs kind of up in this area to create that space. We can go ahead now and get our hardware back in on this taillight. Now I've gone ahead and ran our green wire over to our right turn signal or our passenger side. And the way I did that is just using the kick sensor. You can see, I just kind of put that up and over and that way it's gonna hold it in place. And if you want to, you can go ahead and put a few zip ties. Um, now. I'll, I'm gonna make sure that I have enough slack here. So that's why I haven't mounted our module up yet. I wanna make sure that this is able to feed up to our plug. So I'm gonna go ahead, lower this down and try to get this fed up. And I am gonna try that other method that I mentioned by just kind of peeling that and putting it on the side. We'll see how that works. Trying this method, I definitely think this is gonna be a lot easier. Already just feeding our fish wire through there proved to be a lot easier. So uh, I'll go ahead and get this taped. As I mentioned, I'm gonna to try to feed this wire up. This rubber plug might get in the way, but as long as we get the plugs kind of through here, we should be able to work that wire around and over and still get it in the same position that we need it to be. Uh, and I think this is gonna save a lot of time of trying to fish this up through that small hole. It does kind of get caught in here. So just pry this back a little bit. And once you get the first one through, this is kind of what we're looking for here. So what I'm gonna do is just take our wire and just kind of this rubber portion, you may need to like pinch back here, but we should be able to work our wire up. And this is a notoriously uh, tricky vehicle for wiring. It's just pretty tight. So I think this is gonna be the best method. Um, and then kind of as we get up here, same thing, just kind of work this around the plastic. Just kind of peel this back, ran our wire. And once we kind of get it in this position here, we can go ahead, get our tape off and then we can get everything plugged in just as the other one. Now, I do worry a little bit about getting this all back in place because we can't feed this up. It seems like we don't have enough slack here, um, but we should be able to make this work. Now, as far as getting this back in, you're gonna find out that this does not have a ton of extra slack. And in fact, I've extended the wire just to make it a little bit easier. Uh, another option to get around this is going to be this metal tab here. If you kind of pry this up, 
you can work this clip off and that's going to give you a little bit more space uh, to be able to put that plug up there and you can also see there's another clip here with a zip tie but that's going to keep the wire safe here so i would leave that one this should give you enough to be able to tuck this up but again i extended my green wire uh, just to give us a little bit more room to work with and just when routing it another option is to also um, kind of just make sure that the module is a little bit closer to the center to give you the best shot and i'll show you kind of what i did down there but for now i'm just going to tuck that up there we have our plugs in so we can go ahead and snap this in place and then get our screws back in so you can see this is where i extended my green wire just to give us a little bit more slack and i think maybe just routing it to where this wire is a little bit further over rather than going over this first portion of that kick sensor to hold the wire up now the module is going to have to hide a little bit more this way but it might give you enough clearance but i think in conjunction with just running it a little bit uh, further over and that clip you should be able to have enough to not have to splice in an extra wire but if it is still too tight to get that tail light in place this is what i ended up doing now when we make our connections under here i'm choosing to use a heat shrink butt connector and we have these here available at e-trailer they're not included in the kit but these are really nice because once you make that connection you can heat shrink them up and it's going to become a watertight seal now you are going to have a panel that's going to kind of cover this all so it's going to help protect it a little bit so if you don't pick these up you could use the standard butt connector I kind of suggest running some electrical tape around it just to kind of create a nice seal so what i'm going to do before mounting any of this up is i'm going to go ahead and just attach my power wire black to black so this is obviously what came in the kit and i'm going to be using again a heat shrink butt connector here so we'll just go ahead and strip this back a little bit and then that's already pre-stripped so that's kind of nice we can go ahead and just get this crimped on and this is what's going to be routing out to our battery so we'll be underneath the vehicle running this up to the engine compartment but for now i just want to make sure we have this attached it's going to make it a little bit easier than once that's mounted up sometimes you don't have enough wire to really work with so what we need to do while we're still here is put our ground wire on and luckily for us there is a factory ground that's uh, in our case on the hitch here it's just a 10 millimeter so i'm going to go ahead and use that same stud so we'll just get that nut off put our ground wire in place and just make sure that this has full contact with that metal there and then we can go ahead and put this nut back on and tighten it up So now we need to mount our module up and in the kit there's going to be double sided tape so this will allow us to kind of stick this onto a flat surface. Now I'm also going to be using a zip tie on this portion here just that way over time if this adhesive doesn't stay sticky it's still going to be attached and not going to be rattling around um, underneath the vehicle. So there's a bunch of different spots that you can choose but main thing is this portion here you want this facing down that way water doesn't pool up in here uh, it's just kind of a you know to keep it a little bit safer from water damage so i think using our bumper beam is going to be a good option so i'm going to just kind of stick this on here and run my zip tie around it and that way it's firmly attached i've actually zip tied it up to the plastic here of our kick sensor and then i've used the two holes here to zip tie this up and that's going to give us a really nice hold here just kind of get that mounted up in a safe spot again you'll you're going to have the underbody panel on here so it should keep it pretty well protected but just make sure that it's not going to be rattling around so next i'm going to run my power wire up to the battery and then i'll show you how i routed it and then also show you the connections made in the engine bay so i've gone ahead and i zip tied up just my extra bundle of wires that i had here and then our power wire i've just ran under here now that underbody panel is going to hold this up um, but i've gone ahead and gone over our cross member and i just made a little zip tie here and then made my way over just using some of the factory loom here um, to attach it to and then finally at this panel here there's just going to be plastic 10 millimeter uh, nuts that we saw similar to the underbody panel uh, in the back and i just tucked this in here it makes it nice and e easy to just run this up and then I've tucked it over here. So now I need to get my fish wire and feed it from the top on the battery side down. We'll make our connection and pull this up to get it in the engine bay. 
pulled my wire up and I put some zip ties below so it doesn't become loose in the engine bay. Now you're gonna want to just make sure to avoid any exhaust or suspension or anything that might be moving in the process. So just find a nice clean path to pass it up. Now I have plenty of extra power wire here so I'm gonna just go ahead and cut off our excess. And we're gonna to need to tie into our positive terminal. But before we do that, we need to attach our fuse holder. And to gain access to this, I wanna make sure that I have the proper length. Um, so we're gonna pull off this little intake tube. And you just pop that, and then this should kind of raise out and separate, and that's gonna gain us access to our positive terminal here. So we'll just go ahead and pop this, and then this should come open. Now we have plenty of options here that we can tie into. Um, so we'll be using our ring terminal to tie into one of these. So make sure that you have your socket ready. But before we do that, we'll get our fuse holder attached. And this is gonna be pretty easy here. We're gonna just strip back our power wire a little bit. And these actually are pre-stripped. You just peel this section off and we'll just take the included butt connector and then tie into this. But again, I'm gonna make sure that I don't have too much extra wire here so we can actually cut this back a little bit more if we want to. Our sticker might be in the way here, so I'll pull that off. And it's very important, do not put your fuse in until we have everything connected. We don't want power going through this and potentially shorting anything or causing any sparks while we do this. So just make sure to keep that fuse handy and only put that in at the very end. I also want to give it a, just a quick tug here to make sure that our connection is secure. And I'm going to go ahead and get this portion taken off. And we have our ring terminal. So this is where it's going to actually attach onto our battery. We'll just crimp this down. I'm going to go grab my socket and that way we can get this attached to the positive terminal. We'll just go ahead and tighten that back down. And then we can close this. And now we can take our fuse and put this in place. Once you press that in, you can go ahead and cap this up. And we just need to test to make sure our wiring's working. We'll head to the back to our four pole. Using a four pole tester, this is really nice because it keeps it specific to the vehicle. So we're gonna run through our light sequence just to make sure it's all working properly. So first we're gonna do our running lights. Next, we'll do our left turn signal. Then we'll do our right turn signal. And then finally our brakes. Now with them all working properly, I'm gonna go ahead and get this tied up nice and clean. Now it does come with a dust cap, which is gonna be working twofold, not only to keep this clean, but also to attach to our safety chain loops. But we also need to make sure we have our underbody panel set up. So putting a few zip ties along the hitch to kind of keep this up but also have just enough to tie into our trailer is kind of what we're looking for. But other than that, once we have everything put back in place, we're ready to start using our trailer wiring. And that was a look and installation of the Kurt four pole trailer wiring harness on a 2022 Chrysler Pacifica.